Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Go Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte. Guys, we're taking a look at one of the bigger trades of the day. The three-way trade between the Nashville Predators, the Vegas Gold Knights, and the Philadelphia Flyers. We'll be taking a look at all of the guys involved, how this works out for each team. We'll be looking at all of that in this video. So, let's start it off. So, the Vegas Golden Knights acquire Nolan Patrick... The Nashville Predators acquire Cody Glass and defenseman Philip Myers. And the Philadelphia Flyers acquire right shot defenseman Ryan Ellis. So let's go through each team who I think won this trade, who lost this trade. Let's go over all of it. So we're going to start off with the Philadelphia Flyers acquiring the probably the biggest asset right now in terms of value. And that is right shot defenseman Ryan Ellis. Ryan Ellis is making $6.25 million for the next six seasons. Per season, he's making $6.25, and he's 30 years old. So he will be 36 at the end of this contract, and he's getting paid a lot of money. Now, the good thing about Ryan Ellis is he's a good defenseman. Whoa, thing came out. Ryan Ellis is a very good defenseman. Uh, this is a guy that's going to add that veteran leadership in the locker room. Now, we know the Flyers were in on different guys around the league, maybe a Seth Jones, maybe a Duncan Keith, maybe even a guy in Phil, you know, in Nashville, which was Matthias Ekholm. But it turns out Ryan Ellis is the odd man out in Nashville. And I'm going to assume that the Nashville Predators are potentially going to leave a guy like Dante Fabro unprotected in the expansion draft unless they go with the eight skater route which they could do and they could protect all four defensemen and four forwards that still could happen and maybe that's why they moved a guy like Arvidsson because that was the plan I don't necessarily know uh but definitely interesting so what are the Philadelphia Flyers are what do the Flyers get here like I said 6.25 million per season for the next six years till he's 36. That is a little bit concerning. Uh, but Ryan Ellis is a he's a smooth skating defenseman. He's not one of these just super huge guys that just can't skate. No, Ryan Ellis is a very very good skater. He's a right shot defenseman, uh, so we could play alongside Ivan Provorov on the top pair. But he's a top four defenseman, so even if he doesn't work on that top pair with Provorov. He could still play on the second pair and still be a very good defenseman. Uh, this adds depth to the blue line, which the Philadelphia Flyers have. We've been talking about this now for over a year since they lost Matt Niskanen. But the long contract is a little bit worrisome. And I wonder if that maybe diminished the value a little bit of Ryan Ellis. But again, the other team still got a lot of value. And let's get into that. So now the Nashville Predators acquire centerman Cody Glass. He's making 863k this season. He's still on his entry level contract. He's 22 years old and he's the first pick, the first pick in the, you know, the organization, the franchise of the Vegas Golden Knights uh, back in 2017, 2018. No. Summer of 2017, that's when they picked Cody Glass in the top 10. And Cody Glass they chose Cody Glass over Nick Suzuki, and we're seeing how that kind of turned out for the Golden Knights. Kind of, you know, kind of didn't work out so well for them. But Cody Glass now goes to the Nashville Predators, and like I said, a former top ten draft pick. He's 22 years old, and he has the potential to be a top six center. Now, like I said, if the Vegas Golden Knights saw him as a top six center, he would still be in Vegas. But obviously, that hasn't worked out. That didn't work out in the playoffs. Didn't work out during the regular season. And Pete DeBoer, uh, it just didn't see Mike saw the future in Cody Glass that everybody was hoping they would see back in that 2017 draft. Uh, and they also pick up, they are the only team here to pick up more than one other player. They pick up two players. They pick up right shot defenseman Philip Myers. Philip Myers, 24 years old, two years left at $2.55 million per season. Uh, a pretty nice cap hit overall for a top four defenseman maybe a number five but he could be a number three or four uh with the Nashville Predators and especially you know replacing a guy like Ryan Ellis on that right side again he's not Ryan Ellis but again he's cheaper and with the direction they're going in in a younger or you know he's six years younger than Ellis so you could look at it in that way uh, and I think this may give room for a guy like Dante Fabro as long as he stays in Nashville next year will give Dante Fabro more ice time 
uh, in that top four. Uh, like I said, a four or five defenseman, and he has more than one year left on his deal. So this is a good move for the Nashville Predators. You get a little bit of security on the back end, uh, especially if they decide not to protect a guy like uh, Dante Fabro. It's definitely interesting in that regard. Or I assume they're going to leave Philip Myers protected because they did just acquire him. Uh, but we'll kind of see how that shakes out for the Preds. But again, I think the Predators did very well uh, in this trade. Now the Vegas Golden Knights. The Vegas Golden Knights have the biggest wild card player in this trade scenario. So you pick up Nolan Patrick, the former second overall pick in that 2017 NHL draft where uh, Jack Hughes was selected for, or Nico Hischier. Nico Hischier was selected first overall. So you kind of wonder, where is Nolan Patrick here? Because I remember in that 2016, 2015, for like two years, Nolan Patrick, this kid, this big, you know, hulking six foot something, 200 pound, whatever, a monster in the WHL playing with the Brandon Wheat Kings was supposed to be the next franchise altering, potentially the next Eric Lindros-esque player in the NHL. And unfortunately for Nolan Patrick, that does not happen for him. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights acquire his signing rights, which is good. Uh, he's 22 years old. Like I said, former, well, he is a second overall selection. And, uh, you know, he's really struggled with the Philadelphia Flyers because of his injuries. And that's a big reason that Nico, he, Nico Hischier got selected ahead of him by the New Jersey Devils in that 2017 draft because they were both so close in terms of talent, but the injuries in his final in his draft year was a bit of a concern for the Devils, and that's why they went with Nico Hischier, who now is the captain of the New Jersey Devils, so we know how that's turning out with that decision. Uh, and you just knew, you know, I think a lot of Flyers fans, uh, at the end of the season, I made a video talking about Maybe a disconnect with, you know, with Philadelphia Flyers insiders kind of saying that Nolan Patrick does not want to come back to Philly. He just wants to start somewhere new, have a nice fresh start, especially with all the injuries and stuff. And really, the Flyers have a really good center core. I mean, you look at what they've got there. They've got, you know, not that Giroux has played center, but you have Giroux who can play center. Travis Konechny, Sean Couturier, like... Like, where does he fit in there? Nicholas Abe Kubel, Morgan Frost, hopefully comes into the lineup at some point. So Nolan Patrick f just falls down the depth chart very quickly. German Rupsov, Isaac Ratcliffe. I mean, there's I can name off a bunch of centers that are big centers, just like Nolan Patrick, but they don't have the injury stuff. And that's kind of been, you know, the Achilles heel for Nolan Patrick. But this is a really interesting move by Vegas going off of, you know, he's a former second round, f former second overall pick. He has that potential there. He's just gotten hit with the injury bug really hard. But under Pete DeBoer, maybe that will change and he's able to just get healthy and he's going to be a good player. We'll see what happens. And that also adds a little bit of grit and toughness down the middle for the, for the Vegas Golden Knights, which I'm telling you, this is a move where Nolan Patrick... He doesn't sound like a great player right now, but I, for some reason with Pete DeBoer and what the Vegas Golden Knights have done with players, I am a little bit concerned here that he could maybe turn his career around. Now, maybe in a year from now, I look like an idiot and Nolan Patrick sucks, but for some reason, I am getting the sense that Nolan Patrick has more to offer to the NHL. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, winner of this trade, I'm going to give it to the Nashville Predators. Cody Glass, former top five or five or six selection uh, overall has the potential to be a top six uh, center in the league. And not to mention, they also pick up a defenseman. And I really like what they get in Philip Myers here. I, I, again, he does. He seems like just a scratch pad player in this deal. But Philip Myers could really add some really nice depth to John Hines' defense in Nashville. And like I said, if they have problems here with the expansion draft, maybe losing guys like Fabro, maybe getting a guy like Philip Myers. Again, he's not Dante Fabro, but if you could find a way uh, to make that work, maybe that helps just a little bit. Or maybe they're going to wave Philip Myers out there as a little dangling thing. Maybe they take Philip Myers instead of a, another player on the roster that maybe they want to keep, like Alexander uh, Cartier, you know, which we have talked a lot about him in Nashville. So we'll see what happens. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Who do you think won this trade? The Philadelphia Flyers, who got Ryan Ellis, the Nashville Predators, who got Cody Glass and Philip Myers, or the Vegas Golden Knights, who pick up the former second overall pick 
Nolan Patrick. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you guys like what we're doing here at Goal Line Hockey, you want to see the latest news around the NHL and more videos just like this one, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and an even bigger subscribe down below. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys next time.